hello there lovely one it's me helen the great and recently i gave these questions to my grade 11s in their paper one exam now all of them are algebra they're solving equations and the instructions say solve for x correct to one decimal place if necessary now that means that we may not need to solve uh, to one decimal place however if we do need to round off to one decimal place it's because we are going to use the quadratic formula and we've got to keep that in mind as we go along the first question it's really a two mark question it's giving me an equation and the equation has already been factorized which means i can immediately say that x is either going to be zero or x minus two will be zero and the reason why I make each one of those factors equals to zero is because, let's look up over here, if this x was equals to zero, then zero times x minus two would equal zero. So that would make the statement true. And if we look at the second bracket with x minus two, if x minus two was zero, then the statement would be true as well. So that means my answers are going to be x is equals to zero, or x is equals to 2. Nice, easy two mark question. And there it is. The next one, I've got a quadratic equation again, and I know that if I want to solve any quadratic equation, I should actually get it to the point where it equals 0. Now I can play with this for a while to try and get it to factorize, but experience tells me that it's not going to factorize. And I should rather just use the quadratic formula. So I've got minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And remember that you do get this formula on the formula sheet. I recommend that before you substitute things in, you just write down what each variable is going to be. So a is equals to 1, b is equals to negative 3, and c is equals to negative 3. The fact that we're using the quadratic formula tells us that this is a problem that we're not going to be able to do without the use of a calculator. So once you've written down all of the values that you're substituting in, you don't actually have to do any more calculations. You just whip out that calculator and plug things in rather than trying to find out the value underneath the square root sign and all of that just go straight for the calculator and let's do that okay so we put our fraction button in and i'm going to basically write down or type in exactly what i see but remember that plus and minus indicates that we've got two different formulas one of them is going to be with a plus and the square root of and it's negative 3 squared minus 4 times by 1 times by negative 3 make sure that you're double checking the whole way along things seem to be fine for now and 2 times by 1 and I get an answer of 3 plus square root of 21 over 2 we need to round to one decimal place so that's going to take us to 3 comma 8 let's write that down x is equals to 3 comma 8 how many answers do i need well it's x squared which indicates i'm going to get two different answers and now i'm going to be sneaky rather than typing in everything again I'm going all the way back and I'm just deleting that and putting a negative which gives me x is equals to negative 0 comma 8 yes so those are my two possible answers nice and easy isn't it let's just put an or between so it feels better okay so your marks are going to be for your substitution and then for your answers once again not a difficult question you've just got to figure out that you have to use the quadratic formula if we move over a little bit 
we have a very interesting question. Now, my grade 11 struggled quite a bit with this question, and I can predict that most people would as well. What throws people off is the square root, and in order to get rid of the square root, we're going to want to get to the point where we square both sides. But in order to do that in the best possible way, we need to get the square root on its own, on the one side. So that means I am bringing everything over to the other side, and we all know that I'm not actually bringing things over. I'm just subtracting 2 from both sides and adding x to both sides. Uh, but it does still, it's easier to say that I'm moving things over. Okay, so now I've got to the point where I've got a square root on this side, and I've got just a normal number on the other. In order to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides, which then very nicely cancels out that square root. And I've got 15 minus 2x is equals to x squared. What type of equation do I have now? You guessed it, it's a quadratic equation, which means I'm going to make it equal to 0 by shifting things around all over the place. And now we need to figure out if we can factorize this. And I can see exactly how it's going to factorize. Obviously, we're going to have x and x. The reason why we have x and x is because x times x is x squared. Now we're going to have plus 5 and minus 3. And the reason why we have those is because 5 times minus 3 will give us minus 15. But 5 minus 3 will give us 2. So that means it factorizes beautifully. In other words, x is equals to negative 5 or x is equals to 3. So the places you're going to struggle is firstly getting the square root on its own. You're going to forget to do that. So just make a special note now as you're making notes that I must get the square root by itself. After that, it's going to be a lot easier. You're going to square both sides, and then you're going to factorize everything. Remember that algebra comes into everything, your skills of factorizing and all sorts of things like that. So never forget them. Your first mark is for getting the square root by itself. Second mark is for squaring. Third mark is for factorizing. And fourth mark of for getting both of those right. I suppose I could give five marks. But I think that's good enough for now. And of course, as you know, when you're recording something, your phone will always go off. So I do apologize there. But anyway, back to life. The next question has exponents in, and most people are going to look at that and want to cry. But if we break it up a little bit more, it gets a little easier to see what's happening. So I'm changing 7 to the power of x minus 1 to 7 to the power of x times by 7 to the power of negative 1. I'm going to leave this as this for now, because I'm going to fiddle with it just now. I really want to focus on what's happening over here. I could do a straightforward and forward addition, but really, for me, it's easier to see that I can take out a common factor of 7 to the power of x, and then I'm left with 1 minus 7 to the power of negative 1. On the other side, I still have 294 divided by 49. Once again, I'm leaving it as it is, because I can see over here that I'm going to have to use my calculator, so I might as well just do it all at the same time with my calculator. I'm going to keep those as they are, and then I'm going to divide by what was in the brackets, what's still in the brackets, and now, because I have my calculator, I can do this in the calculator. So, I love my calculator. Um, let's type it all in, close those brackets, divide by, and we've got 1 minus 7. I know a lot of people are going to look at this and go, oh, but she's being lazy, we could have done this and that. 
And yes, we could have done it all in our head, and it would be fine. But isn't that so much more stress-free? I now know that I have 7 to the power of x is equals to 7. Now generally in maths, we leave out a couple of things because we're lazy. For example, any base has an exponent of 1. We don't write it there because mathematicians were always trying to find the most efficient way of doing things. One of them is not putting in the obvious, like 7 to the power of 1 is just 7. So that means because this side is equals to that side, and 7 is the same value as 7, it must mean that x has the same value as 1. And there's the answer. In terms of mark allocation, I would give a mark for firstly being able to deal with this side. However you deal with it, I would give that mark. I would also give a mark for being able to do this calculation over here. So I'm not necessarily giving a mark for simplifying the fraction. I'm more giving a mark for being able to isolate 7 to the power of x. Lastly, I would give a mark for saying 7 to the power of x is equals to 7. And finally, the answer is x is equals to 1. And there we go. Four mark question. Okay, I've got one more question for us to do. And as you can see, this is not an equation. It's an inequality. And inequality questions really are just picture questions. That's all they are. We get to a point where we can factorize it, especially because it's an x squared, and then we draw pictures. Okay, it's a quadratic equation, or a quadratic inequality. Um, so I'm going to get everything to one side and make it equal to or less than 0. So that gives me x squared minus 4x minus 5 is less than or equal to 0. Factorize it. Hopefully you can see how easy this one's... Oh, heaven. Silly mistake. Um, hopefully you can see how easy this is going to be. x minus 5 and x plus 1. And it's less than, and this is the point where it becomes a picture problem. Now, as you know, a quadratic function is a parabola, and one where it is a to the power, and well, a is positive, is going to be a parabola that smiles. Now, if we're trying to find the x-intercepts, we would make y zero, and we would end up with something like that. So we would have an x-intercept of negative one, and an x-intercept of five. The inequality is asking us where it's less than zero. Now it's less than zero where the parabola is underneath the line. Why? Because that line indicates zero. So less than zero would be below that line. So now we can see that actually the function between negative one and five is where it's less than zero. It has a value of less than zero. And that's our answer. So it's got nothing about and nothing to do with rearranging and then making each bracket equal to zero and all sorts of things like that. It's a picture problem. Let's draw that into a smiley face. Well, lovely one, that's it for now. Much love.